about to interview Lloyd Kaufman. Um, wish me luck. I mean, does anyone ever come out of the woodwork and say, hey, hey, you know, Lloyd, you, you, you done well? You're Stan Lee was a big supporter. He got us into Marvel Comics, and uh, I was friends with him until he died. Uh, and uh, John G. Avelson, who, with whom I uh, worked on Joe, Cryunko, Rocky, and we were lifelong friends. He, he was realistic. But he also would say to me, uh, you know, he told me I had a bad reputation and that there's no chance I'm going to get hired. But uh, as a director on some bigger stuff, uh, you know, because I, obviously the stuff I do is uh, rather personal. They taunted him. They tormented him until he had a horrifying accident and fell into a vat of nuclear waste. Transforming little Melvin into a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength. Melvin became the Toxic Avenger. The first superhero born out of nuclear waste. Uh, but he also, uh, you know, would, would say, hey, look what you've accomplished. You've got this company that's been going for all this time. You've You've created the Toxic Avenger and Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD. There is a trauma universe, Dolphin Man, Class of Nukemide, the Cretans. Uh, but, uh, you know, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody, nobody wants to care because there's not enough in it for them. New York Times wants the advertising, so they have to twist themselves into a uh, pretzel to say that uh, a zombie movie brought to you by 20th Century Fox, or the fifth iteration of Chucky, which isn't even a movie. You can't win. It's just, I don't know what more I can do. <laughs> and the Toxic Avenger remake, you know, let's see. I think that's going to be very good. But, uh, you know, you know we're, again, we're only minor players. I, I mean, I, that that director, I like, I mean, oh, yeah, first not of all, making great players. actor. And then, and, then, uh, and then his movie, I Don't Feel at Home in This World. Yeah, it's, it's terrific. He's perfect. a... We are very fortunate, legendary, I, I, again, I knock on wood, but uh, they get it. They get it, and Malcolm, Malcolm Blair gets it, and, uh, you know, Dinklage was a Toxic Avenger fan. What's interesting is, uh, um, you know, I, I wanted to ask the cast when I was on set, did you hear of the top? You know, most of them weren't even born when we made Toxic Avenger. And it's remarkable how many people enjoy the film. It's just, you know, unless we have a huge amount of money and the right PR people, we, uh, we're fucked. We're dead in the water, basically. The only reason Troma's still here is our fans. That's the secret sauce. Our fans, they book our theaters. They gave us money for hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. We got about 10% of the budget which was, we got 35,000 bucks, not quite 10%, uh, from uh, Bad Dragon. Bad Dragon uh, is a company that uh, makes adult toys, and uh, they gave us 35,000 bucks just to help us as patrons of the arts. Uh, you know, they didn't even ask for a piece of the movie because they knew, <laughs> they knew that it wouldn't really be, a, you know, it'd be better to buy Google stock. And, and the cast of Hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm Everybody on it was a trauma fan, and uh, it was the greatest uh, experience of my filmmaking career because everybody was so devoted to the movie, and we ended up making a fifty million dollar movie for under half a you know maybe half a million bucks. Uh, we did nine days in Albania, terrific place to film. So yeah, why was that? But just cheap. We got or? a deal we couldn't refuse. Thanks to Justin Martell, who has a, a specialty of developing industries or travel or tourism in uh, obscure new places and he had he had a relationship with the Albanian government. And I was curious if there was any Shakespearean quotes or, or even within Shitstorm that you felt applied to you were trolling. Oh fuck yeah. The, I waited until I was in my dotage to uh, tackle the Tempest. I would have done it when James Gunn was around you know when, when we did Tromeo and Juliet but I wanted to wait till I was old, and and uh, and uh, boy, I'm I'm Prospero for sure. Uh, you know, it's a it's a play that's uh, druggy as hell, and uh, and has a monster, and it's got uh, fairies, and and uh, 
a beautiful rom- love story, and um, it's it's uh, it's trauma all the way. So I'm Prospero, and uh, I, I I feel it. Our revels now are ended. And these, our actors, as I foretold you, are spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped mountains, the solemn temples, the glorious palaces, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherits shall dissolve. I'm here with Mr. John Brennan, producer of Shakespeare Shitstorm. How are you doing tonight? Thank you. I'm doing well, and I appreciate you uh, speaking to me on this very prestigious evening where we've premiered hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm at the Museum of the Moving Image. Well, this is- Honestly, this has been uh, a humongously cathartic. We've been watching this movie on, uh, I don't know, computer screens and television screens for about three or four years. And this is the first time that I got to see the movie in a big screen with the sound and all that stuff and to see it with a bunch of people and the laughter and it's just a different experience i mean this is a communal movie uh and it played really well i mean all the jokes that we wanted to hit hit all the gags hit and it was just it was unbelievable so i feel like you know post pandemic this is the movie that you have to see in a theater it's all about trying to bring people together and lloyd's message essentially for one of the themes is that if we all work together as the human race that we'll get to a better place. Thank you for having me. This was absolutely a pleasure. And I just want to say quickly that I owe it all to Lloyd Kaufman, who gave me a shot to uh, produce this movie. This was uh, the second movie that I ever produced, second feature. And uh, it's invaluable. I mean, tr- the trauma system works. There's, there's an old infomercial from the 90s called The Trauma System. And the, the, the thing that they say throughout is, the trauma system worked for me. And... For me, in my life, that absolutely is true. The t- trauma system worked for me. Um, not many people have done what Lloyd and Michael Herz and Trauma have done over the course of 50 years now. And it's hard to deny. Um, they never really sold out. I mean, selling out is one thing, but they never really were uh, betrayed their own hearts, is what I'm trying to say. And they made movies the way that they wanted to make them, and they made movies that they wanted to see. Uh, and a lot of people give that up in order for to get a uh, you know glory or a paycheck or something so they've always been true to themselves and uh, I respect that about Troma and I hope it keeps going I hope that Lloyd and Michael can keep it going for the next younger generation and and get those people inspired and get the next like Lloyd says the next James Guns and things like that out there sometimes it's good to give yourself away for free I came to Troma as a uh, editing volunteer and I edited some of Lloyd's make your own damn movie stuff and uh, he got, I guess he liked it, so I stuck around. Uh, then I got to be his assistant, did that for a few years. Then I got to produce a couple of his movies. So uh, with that, I then got to get on a TV show called The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. Because I met Justin Martell and Matt Mandarines. So I owe, a lot to Troma, Troma, Troma. I owe a lot to Troma, and I would like to say that uh, Lloyd is such a generous guy, and I wouldn't have the career that I have without... Him. So thank you, Lord. Well, thank you very, very much. But, uh, you guys, we certainly paint the dreams, and that's the thing. It's like a film school in a way. It's the Hudson School of Painting, the Trauma School of Filmmaking. <laughs> kind of. uh, Jeff, t- t- you know, we actually pay you a little bit. Uh. Stand up, please. Give yourself a round of applause.